The Jack Benny Program. Here Quality of product is essential to continuing success. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Right you are. Yes, sir. L-S-M-F-T. 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 Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. Sure thing. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen present at the auctions can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy the finer, the lighter, the naturally milder Lucky Strike tobacco. This fine Lucky Strike tobacco gives you real, deep-down smoking enjoyment. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. At 49, sold American. The Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, about three hours ago, Jack Benny left home for the studio. Rochester was driving him, and on the way, they had a little tire trouble. So let's go back and find out what happened. How, uh, how much longer before you'll have the spare on, Rochester? Just a couple of minutes. Couple of minutes. Would have been fixed long ago if I'd have done it myself. Hand me the wrench, will you, boss? The wrench? Here. That's the screwdriver. Oh, oh, the wrench. Here. That's the pump. Oh. Oh, here. That's the hubcap. Oh, you want the wrench? The wrench. <laughs> You're back to the screwdriver again. <laughs> oh. Let's go around again, boss. I need the rest. What? You know, boss, you just ain't mechanically minded. I am, too. Then why do you call me every morning to screw the cap back on your toothpaste? <laughs> Look, uh, just hurry with the tire, will you? I'm almost finished. Good. I just can't understand having a blowout. A very good tire. It's a general. I know, but you run this general down to a buck private. <laughs> Stop being silly. That tire hasn't got so many holes in it. It hasn't. Boss, the inner tube could be arrested for indecent exposure. <laughs> what? Even the wheel is ashamed to go around with it. <laughs> Rochester, that's a terrible joke. An awful joke. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You always say that, and two weeks later, it shows up on your program. <laughs> it does not. Now, come on, you're all through. Let's get going. You? you know, Rochester, one of the reasons I haven't fixed this car up is that I've been thinking of getting a new one. Really, boss? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh... <laughs> I, I think this car has just about seen its best days. I told you that the day you bought it. <laughs> I know, I know. Do you really think you'll buy a new car? Well, it all depends on what they'll allow me for a trade-in on this car. How much do you think they'll appraise it for? Boss, when a car gets this old, they don't appraise it, they weigh it. <laughs> Well, they'll have to give me a good price or I won't trade. We're pretty close to NBC. You better start looking for a parking place. Why don't we go to a parking lot? Rochester. Sorry, boss. I'm letting my post-war plans get the best of me. Here's a parking place right here in front of the studio. Okay. I'm going in. You stay here and watch the car. Yes, sir. <laughs> what an automobile. This is the car that made the Irishman stop smiling. What? And drove months mad. Never mind. Just stay here and wait for me. Da da dee da dum da dee da dum da dum dum dee. Oh, hello, little boy. Hello, Mr. Benny. May I have your autograph, please? Why, certainly, certainly. There you are, <laughs> Jack Benny. Thank you. Say, Mr. Benny, are you really thirty-seven years old? Oh. Well, I. <laughs> 
I, I will be in February. <laughs> How old are you, Sonny? Five. Only five? Well, uh, I will be in June. <laughs> oh. Well, goodbye, Sonny. I have to hey, run away. Hey, Jackson, along. Jackson. Oh, hello, Phil. Am I late? No, no, I just got here myself. Are you Phil Harris? Yeah, that's me. Do you want my autograph? Gee, I'd sure like to have it. Okay, hand me your book. There you are, Phil Harris. Thank you. Gee, aren't there supposed to be two R's in Harris? I don't know, kid. I spell it different every time. <laughs> Come on, Phil, let's go. Hey, Jackson, what's that you got under your arm? Oh, it's a box of candy I'm giving Mary. Just a little surprise. You know, she was so nice to me when I was in the hospital last week. Come on, let's go in. You know, Phil, on the program today, I wish well, you'd Well, hiya, play... Jack. Hello, Filthy. Well, Cass Daly. Hiya, Cass. Well, glad to see you, Cass. You know, you're doing a swell, you're doing a swell job on the Fitch bandwagon. Well, thanks. And say, Jack, I'm glad I met you and Phil. Yeah. I'd like to invite you to a party I'm giving Saturday night. Gosh, yeah. I've asked everybody in Hollywood. Clark Gable, Van Johnson, Bing Crosby, Cary Grant, Gary Cooper, Fred McMurray. But, Cass, they're all men. Aren't you inviting any girls? <laughs> you're new around here, ain't you, bud? <laughs> Oh, I see. <laughs> hey, Cass, you're a regular female wolf, ain't you? Uh, well, you know my sponsor's motto. If the shoe fits, wear it. <laughs> I said it, I'm glad! <laughs> Why? So long, Cass. See you later. So long, Jack. <laughs> you know, Phil, it's fun coming down to broadcast every week. You see the old gang like Cass Daly and all the others? Yeah. You know, Jackson, Cass uh, lives out in my neighborhood. She does? Yeah. You only get to see her once a week, but I get to see Cass daily. <laughs> oh, Harris, you said it and nobody's glad. <laughs> Well, how can you think of all those corny jokes? I don't know, Jackson. They just come to me. Well, isn't there, isn't there someplace you can hide? <laughs> you know, Phil, those are the kind of jokes that made the Irishman stop smiling and drove months mad. <laughs> uh, if Rochester thinks I'm going to wait two weeks, he's crazy. <laughs> No, sir. What did you say, Jackson? Nothing, nothing. Hey, there's Larry rehearsing a line. Come on, Phil, let's go over to my dressing room, will you? Come on. I'm as restless as a willow in a windstorm. I'm as jumpy as a puppet on a string. I'd say that I had spring fever But I know it isn't spring I am starry-eyed and vaguely discontented Like a nightingale without a song to sing Oh, why should I have spring fever when it isn't even spring I keep wishing I were somewhere else Walking down a strange new street Hearing things that I have never heard From a girl I've yet to meet As a spider spinning daydreams I'm as giddy as a baby on a swing I haven't seen a crocus or a rosebud Or a robin on the wing 
But I feel so gay in a melancholy way That it might as well be spring It might as well be spring Hey, Phil, the, the kid's voice is improving all the time, isn't it? Yeah, and how do you like the way my band accompanies them? Very good, Phil, very good. But look, isn't that a, isn't that a new guitar player you've got over there? Where? Right over there, sitting on the stool. Isn't he new? No, that's Frankie. We just washed him. <laughs> oh. Well, Phil, why don't, you use, uh, why don't you use soap on the rest of them? You might find some pretty good musicians under there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you better... <laughs> well, you better rehearse your number now. I'm going over to Mary's dressing room and give her this box of candy. Okay. Yeah, da dee da 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 dee da 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 Oh, you can't fool me. Come on in, Charlie. <laughs> Charlie? Hmm. Mary, I demand an explanation. Oh, Jack, I knew it was you all the time. Oh. And stop pouting. Pouting? Listen, sister, I never let any girl upset me. Oh, no. What about the time your girlfriend, Gladys Abisco, returned those socks you knitted for? Mary, you know I don't knit socks for girls. I knitted those for myself. <laughs> I did. Well, why didn't you give them to Gladys? Because they were too big for me. <laughs> That's why. Anyway, Mary, I stopped off on the way to the studio and bought you this box of candy. Here. Candy? Gee, thanks. Why'd you do that? Because you were so nice to me when I was in the hospital last week. Oh, it was nothing. It was, too. You came to see me every day, and that's a sign you love me. Oh, it is not. It is, too. I know you. You try to act like you don't, but deep down inside, you think I'm peachy. <laughs> oh, sure. I think you're ginger peachy with whipped cream and a cherry on top, a root toot toot, and a tooty fruit. <laughs> been around Harris too long. Right? <laughs> Listen, you can, you, can, you can joke all you want to, Mary, but it's the little things you do that show me how you really feel. Like last night when I took you for a drive. That was a nice thing you did. Well, we ran out of gas. Somebody had to get out and push. <laughs> well, you didn't have to push so fast. I got a ticket. <laughs> anyway, Mary, now that I brought you a box of candy, you gonna give me a little kiss? Oh, for heaven's sake. Every time a man brings a girl a box of candy, he wants a kiss. It's the same thing with my sister, Babe. It isn't the same. She brings the candy. <laughs> anyway, what are you stalling about? Give me a little kiss. Huh? Jack, I'm not stalling, but take a look at yourself in the mirror. Why didn't you shave? Oh, I don't think I need a shave. You do, too. Well, maybe a little. I can wait till tomorrow. Jack, I never saw anyone like you. If it's hair, you hate to lose it. <laughs> I'll get cleaned up later. I got to run back to my dressing room now and get ready for the show. So long. So long. Oh, Jack, I meant to tell you, sometime when you're thinking of using a guest star, why not get Boris Karloff? Boris Karloff? Yeah, I heard him on Fred Allen's program last week, and he was wonderful. Well, what do you know? Boris Karloff and Fred Allen on the same program. That's like two totem poles broadcasting from the La Brea tar pit. <laughs> I'll see you later, Mary. Okay. Hmm. I can't get over it. Karloff and Allen on the same program. That's like two totem poles. Oh, I said that. <laughs> I'm going to stop parking my gum on my glasses. <laughs> As gruesome... As gruesome as he is, I can't understand how Oh, Carlo... hello, Jack. Uh, what are you mumbling about? Oh, hello, Don. Say, did you hear Fred Allen's program last week? Yes. 
Oh, you know, he had the most terrific joke about you. He did, huh? What was it? He said the Lone Ranger wanted to follow your program because there was enough corn on it to feed his horse. <laughs> That's the first time I ever saw a man laugh himself out of a job. (laughs) What a joke. Anyway, Alan's certainly the right comedian to be on a tea program. Tender Leaf presents Tender Head. (laughs) Oh, Jack, I can't understand why you always pick on Alan. I think he's a nice guy. Don, you've been with me 15 years. What do you know about a nice guy? (laughs) I mean, what... What makes you think Alan's so nice? Do you like his jokes? Oh, but I like his smokes. What? He's a Lucky Strike fan. Fred smokes Lucky Strikes because he knows they're made of the lighter, the finer, the naturally milder tobacco. But... He knows that LSMFT stands for Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. But... Yes, Jack, even the butts are so round, so firm, so <laughs> So free and easy on the draw. I know, Don, I know. Look, and I'll see you later. I gotta go back to my dressing room. Gee, that was a pretty good gag, I thought of. Tender leaf presents tender head. <laughs> I'm solid tonight. <laughs> well, I guess I better put my tie on and... Gee, Mary's right. I do need a shave. I wonder if I've got time to... Yeah, I'll call the studio barber and have him come up. Operator! Operator! Oh, Mabel. What is it, Gertrude? Look at your switchboard. Mr. Benny's dressing room is flashing. Oh, yeah, I wonder what sweet Leilani wants now. (laughs) I'll find out. Yes, Mr. Benny? The studio barber? One moment, I'll connect you. Say, Gertrude, did you see that box of candy Mr. Benny had when he came in the studio? Yeah. I wonder who he bought it for. I don't know, but the piece he gave me was lousy. (laughs) You know, Gertrude, I'll never forget when Mr. Benny first went on the air. Oh, were you the operator then? No, my mother was. (laughs) Gee, did your mother tell you all about him? Yeah, but not till I was 14. (laughs) You know, Mabel, I heard that on his first program, Mr. Benny came to the studio wearing spats. Top hat, white tie, cutaway coat, and a cane. Did he get any laughs? Yeah, he forgot his pants. <laughs> Gee, in those days he was even cornier than Phil Harris. Yeah, and that ain't. Yeah, and that ain't easy. <laughs> you said it. Oh, Mabel, Mr. Benny is flashing you again. Yes, Mr. Benny. I'm through with my call. Yes, sir. Oh, Mabel. May I talk to Gertrude for a minute? It won't do you any good. She thought the candy was lousy. Oh, well, never mind. Goodbye. (laughs) Hmm. That Mabel is cute. I wonder if her mother ever told her about me. Gee, those nights out on Sunset Boulevard where the Trocadero is now. (laughs) Gosh, how time flies. I wish that barber would get here. I called him ten minutes ago. Say, Jack. What is it, Mary? I just went over the script, and do I have to do this awful joke in here? What awful joke? Uh, This one here where you say to me, uh, Mary, why is a cat that walks on the beach like St. Nicholas? Well? And then I have to say, because it has sandy claws. (laughs) Well, Mary, you, you you just don't get it. It's too subtle. You see, Sandy, claws, beach, cap. I wouldn't do that joke if I had nine lives. <laughs> well, then I'll give it to Phil Harris. He'll think I'm doing him a favor. <laughs> yeah, 
I do that. Yeah, see you later. Can't understand why she doesn't like that cat joke. Got screams when I was headlined at the palace in Cucamonga. <laughs> Come in. I'm here to shave you, sir. Oh, are you the barber? Well, what do you think I am with this razor in my hand? The star of Spellbound? <laughs> have to run into him. <laughs> now, let's see if I have everything. Soap, brush, razor, and plasma. <laughs> plasma? I may cut you. Oh, well, be careful, will you? Don't worry. Now, first, I'll sharpen my razor. I don't know why. I always have to run. My, this razor strop seems to be full of wrinkles. That's my arm. <laughs> Oh, yes, so it is. Leathery old limb, isn't it? <laughs> Look, why don't you just... Just a second, Barber. Come in. It's me, Mr. Benny Flanagan, the detective. <laughs> oh, oh, come in, Mr. Flanagan. Sit down over here. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Who's there? Oh. It always sounds like I'm being followed. Uh, tell me, Inspector, have you got any clues about the man who robbed me of the $10,000 and came back and beat me up? Uh, no, I'm here to settle an argument. <laughs> My captain says that the description you gave of the crook was that he had a cauliflower ear, scar on his cheek, a broken nose, and a little wart in his chin. <laughs> Yeah, but I said that you said that the crook had a cauliflower ear, scar on his neck, a broken nose, and a little mole on his chin. Well, well, you were right, Inspector. Yeah, I know it was a little mole instead of a little wart. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad we cleared that up. All right, I'm ready to shave you now. Okay. Oh, say, Mr. Bunny, your barber. Well, who do you think he is with that razor in his hand? The star of Spellbound? Say, that's very clever. Thank you. All right, stop bowing and shave me. Okay, okay, but I need some hot water. You can get hot water out of that wash bowl there. Uh, yes, sir. Hmm. This is the first dressing room I've ever seen with six wash bowls. This dressing room is only temporary. They've been promising me a new one for ten years. <laughs> Now, Inspector, Inspector, did you, um, Inspector, did you find any clues that... Barber, you've got the hot water. Why don't you shave me? I'm making tea. <laughs> oh. Now, Inspector, did you find any other clues that would lead to the capture of the hold-up man? Well, I found one man that was wearing brass knuckles and his fingerprints was exactly the same as the ones we found on your vault. Well, that was the man. Why didn't you arrest him? I didn't have the heart. He was my brother. <laughs> I don't care if he was your brother or not. It was your duty to arrest him. Oh, I couldn't do that. Why not? He's sending me through detective college. <laughs> On my money? A little from you, a little from somebody else, a little from me. From you? Oh, yeah, he steals from me, too. <laughs> Flanagan, get out of here. Get out. Okay, out. okay. You're just mad because I got a little education. Get out! <laughs> hmm. This is all Steve Bradley's fault. What a publicity man. If I get robbed, the least he can do is get me a good detective. I mean, detective. <laughs> and Mr. Benny, I'm ready now. Would you like a close shave or a light shave? What's the difference? With a light shave, I take one step back. <laughs> Just shave me and get it over with. Oh, what's that now? Come in. Hi, Benny. Hello, hello, hello. Long time no see. Oh, hello, Bradley. Fine press agent you are. What's the matter? What's wrong? What's bothering you? What's bothering me? Look, I had a dream that I won $600,000 at the racetrack, and you and your publicity made everybody believe it was true. Yes, yes. And then what happens? I get robbed of $10,000. The same man comes back and beats me up. Yeah, but Benny, I... And then you, you put a detective on the case who doesn't know Greenberg from third base. <laughs> Why shouldn't I be mad? <laughs> what are you laughing at? Uh, the whole thing was a frame-up. I hired a man who robbed you of that $10,000 so it would hit the newspapers, and you'd get a lot of publicity. 
Publicity? You mean that... I certainly, Betty. That crook was just an actor, and I gave him 200 bucks to rob you. Yeah, but how about him coming back and beating me up? I don't worry about it, Benny. He threw that in for nothing. <laughs> All right, Steve, stop being funny and give me my $10,000. Not so fast. I got another great idea. Steve, I've had enough of your crazy ideas. Now, give me my money. Now, wait a minute, Benny. This idea is sensation. It'll sweep the country. Nothing like it has ever been done before. Now, Steve, just a minute. I've I'm got not... an idea for a contest. And we'll give away your $10,000 as prizes. You're going to give away my $10,000? Put down that razor, Benny, and listen to me. <laughs> all right, all right, but talk fast. I can't tell you all about this contest till next week. I've got to get all the details wiped out. But believe me, Benny, it'll be the most sensational thing you've ever heard of. This will be the best way I've ever spent your money. But Steve, Steve. tell me, Benny, so long. I'll see you next Sunday. Hmm. I never saw such a guy. What kind of a contest can that be where I'll have to give away prizes that'll cost me $10,000? Well, I'm not going to worry about it. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. Barbara, shave me. Don't pull him out. <laughs> okay, okay. That was the last one anyway. I wonder what Steve has in his mind. What kind of a contest can it be? Oh, well, I'll find out next Sunday. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, be sure to listen in next Sunday and find out what this contest is all about. Is it true that Jack Benny is going to be forced to give away $10,000 in prizes? Pick him up, Mary. <laughs> yes, folks, $10,000 in prizes. So be sure to tune in next Sunday for all the details. Ladies and gentlemen... Christmas is just one month away, and if our gifts are to reach their destinations on time, we should mail them early. So let's all cooperate and mail Christmas packages now or by December 10th at the latest. Thank you. Jack, will be back in just a minute, but first, here is my good friend, F.E. Boone. At 47, sold American. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts, and Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Mr. Alexander G. Irvin, independent tobacco warehouseman of Reedsville, North Carolina, said, As a tobacco man, I can tell you why Lucky Strike is a milder, better-tasting cigarette. Lucky Strike buys the mild, fragrant tobacco that makes for top smoking enjoyment. That's why I've smoked Lucky's for 11 years. Quote, Lucky Strike buys the mild, fragrant tobacco that makes for top smoking enjoyment. Unquote. Yes, in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's program are Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. And Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. At 45, sold American. Basil Risedale speaking for... L.S.M.F.T. 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 Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Gee. Gee, Mary, I wonder what this contest can be that Steve Bradley has in mind. I don't know, but he's crazy enough to do anything. That's what worries me. Gee, if I'd have listened to him, it would have been me instead of Itchy stuck in that tunnel. <laughs> Oh, well, we'll just have to wait and find out. Good night, folks. This is the National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles.